I am launching this week and I am in crazy launch mode. Everything is running behind, but I keep going and the closer it gets, the more and more excited I get, which is a good sign. I'm Tiffany Lee and this is Think Big. Today, I'm going behind the launch of the course that I created called Success Mindset and detailing for you the agony and the exhilaration that I'm alternately and sometimes simultaneously feeling. I've had this course on my mind for a long time. It's been in book form, it's been in journal form, and now it's in tangible real course form. I've created it. It's like manifestation meets a planner. It's like your biggest dreams but planned and I have run it out to my closest beta users and I've gotten great responses it's already inspired some amazing projects that are on the books to which I can't wait to start sharing so I know that this course is going to be so meaningful for those who take it but the process of being visible and telling everybody that it's out and getting on the rooftops and shouting it out to the world is my problem. I've had a serious resistance to marketing for my entire adult creative career. When I began in music and everybody told me that I had to do this, I had to get an email list or I had to do that and promote myself. And mind you, this was 20 years ago, so the landscape was a little bit different. I absolutely refused. I come from a century where marketing people do the marketing. The artists don't market themselves. The writer doesn't market his own book. The artist doesn't market her work. The performer doesn't market her music. So it's been a journey to come to find that every artist, every performer, every writer, if you are in a creative field, you are doing your own marketing. And after leaving grad school, I took it upon myself to make myself a master of marketing. And what I found is marketing is fun. It's also the age of marketing. So all of the tech tools, all the social media, it's all designed to be marketing. It's built on this idea of talking with your audience, your friends or your family or your followers, but it's built to do amazing, creative, and unusual connection with the people who love you. It took me a long time to get to this place because I've been caught up in what my role is as an artist. The truth is, is that marketing is fun. I've enjoyed it. I bring my creativity to marketing. I bring my storytelling to marketing. I bring everything I love and just put it in the marketing and it becomes part of my work. But there's still a resistance to coming out of my creative routine where I have lots of freedom to explore. It puts me on a tight schedule. But more than that, it makes me very visible. And so I've been exploring for the last week or so this idea of visibility, how it's so important in marketing yourself as a creative coach or an entrepreneur, but yet can be so difficult. I created a version of this course a year ago, I spent a lot of money on it. It would have been very helpful to a lot of people, but I chickened out right around this moment in time, the pre-launch. I went to post my first marketing material, my first video saying, hey, I got a course, and I put it up, and I got excited for a minute, and then I chickened out, and I took it down, and I pretended like the course never existed. And it's a real shame because as I've looked back on the material over the last year, I've been like, what was my problem? Advertising in the 20th century was about connecting to the most amount of people, which is exactly the opposite of what marketing is today. Marketing is connecting to a micro audience, connecting one-on-one -on -one to people that trust you because they know you. It's a completely an opposite different environment. And so for someone like me, who came from the last century, but not only that, was trained in acting and filmmaking from the last century. I've had to lose a lot of those characteristics. And being visible to my small audience, not trying to reach everybody, was kind of like mind flux. 
it was really hard for me to wrap my idea around the fact that I'm talking to my family, I'm talking to the people in my church, I'm talking to other creators, I'm talking to entrepreneurs, I'm talking to mommy groups, and I have all these people in my network and I'm talking to all of them at the same time. And so I think for that reason alone, it has been a twist on my brain. But the beautiful thing has been that it has required of me an authenticity that I would not have had to bring to the table had I not believed in my work enough to bring it out to the world. Being authentic for me has meant showing the people in my life my flaws. It's meant exposing how I'm a little kooky, to say the least. It's meant putting my weird out there. It's meant putting my compassionate foot out there. It's meant putting my righteous indignation out there and finding my team of people that I love and who love me unconditionally. And I think that's the hard part about social media is that it's so painfully obvious when we have difficult run-ins with other people on social media. Perhaps we would have gotten along very well, but we're in a forum discussing politics or we're in a dis forum discussing parenting and these ideas can clash so deeply when it's just the idea out there by itself exposed. If I were in the room with someone, I would be a human being talking to another human being. Being in a room with someone has the benefit of minimizing the importance of the idea. When the text seems to be this spotlight that shines so brightly on every idea, being visible in an environment that's politically lifted, to say the least, where everyone has ideas about everything, is its own landmine. So I'd like to give you three tips that will help you with visibility that I have used over the past couple of weeks to slowly but surely get myself out there and market my launch. Number one, be authentic. Be yourself. You're talking to people who love you. And when we talk to people who we love and who love us, it's a completely different conversation than when we put ourselves out there in front of people we don't know. And I think my tendency was to speak to people as if I didn't know them. I was speaking to people I didn't know as opposed to people I knew. And when I turned it around to people that I know and love that love me with the idea that I'm here to give and not take, to share information, to tell fun stories and you know put my own launch soap opera out for the world, it totally changes the vibe of how I'm showing up. Before, when I was about to have a nervous breakdown last week and I got a migraine and then I got sick, I think not because I got a migraine and I got sick, but because I just didn't want to go on camera, it was because it was about me, 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 me. And not even in an arrogant way, but in a, I'm not good enough way. Who am I to talk? It was pride, but in a negative, inverted sense. It was still me working for my own strength and that I couldn't work for my own strength. But then I turned it around to, wait, no, I'm here because I have something that I believe can help people. It's helped me. So all I have to do is come and share how it's helped me and offer to help other people. And that changed the game for me. That allowed me to have fun, to record my migraines and my drama happening around the launch and literally bring people into my process. And it made it fun for me. And it got my views up because I realized people are interested in what I'm doing because I'm big and famous. No, but because they're my friend. Tip number two, I would urge you to tell a story. Prior to this idea of bringing people behind the launch, I was getting overly concerned with my makeup and overly concerned with my appearance and f the frame of the camera and the words that I was saying instead of creating an experience of transformation. When I realized that I was having a problem, maybe this could be part of the launch in that it's about all the concepts I talk about in Success Mindset. This is the fear and the doubt taking over, even though I know better. It's still going to be a part of my process and moving through it and moving through that fear and doubt will be interesting to the viewer because that is a transformation. That's like what every movie is written about. And so the story became, 
the transformation. I knew there would be one. I knew the migraine would pass. I knew that I would launch this course different from last time and launching the course would be its own transformation. It was simple. The videos became 30 seconds long instead of hours of process. Telling a story through transformation is powerful and it's what we as humans love to hear. That's why we watch the news. It's why we read books. It's why we watch movies. It's why we even listen to music because it transforms us in that moment. Offer a transformation. And three, you have to target your system. Prior to this moment in time, for the last launch, I was uncommitted to any one platform. I have studied filmmaking in grad school and undergrad. I have recorded albums, so I know the voice. And I'm a writer. I've published. So I could not, for the life of me, niche down to a commitment of video, audio, or the written word, which would be YouTube, a podcast, or a blog. In this way, I spread myself way too thin and was trying to do everything and absolutely could not. I also ended up doing a lot of social media stuff that was kind of scattered because it didn't really have a point instead of bringing it to one platform that could contain my message in what would end up becoming a system. So when I honed in on this is going to be a video system. The audio can be taken to a podcast in no time. The text can be taken to social in no time, but I'm going to focus the main section on video. It became much simpler and my schedule kind of settled into place as this action took over. Systems are crucial to working efficiently without a system or a system of just throwing up everything I do on the wall of social media is not effective. Having a system and an output through which to work is incredibly effective and has narrowed my focus and helped me gain traction. Now the launch is coming up on August 25th and I feel like I've moved through the terror and resistance, at least somewhat. Maybe it'll come up and pop up again, but I'm in a period of excitement as I'm finalizing and tweaking all of the little bits and pieces. And I'm getting so excited about this launch and I'm seeing it as a party to celebrate. I've already had a huge win of someone in my beta team committing to finishing the book they've been working on for a decade. So from my perspective, this course is a win before it even launches off. Creating the course in and of itself has been a win for me. And I am dedicated to seeing the wins in my work and what I'm doing and working in, on a foundation of wins as opposed to constantly judging myself and finding myself lacking for the mistakes and problems that are always going to be there. I'm working on my wins. I'd love you to join me for the launch of Success Mindset. It's going to be August 25th. It's going to be a party. I'm doing lots of giveaways. I'm giving the course away to lucky winners. I'm giving away some super cool meditations and visualizations. I'm giving away planners and the workbook from my course. I am so excited and I'm ready to party while I spread the message of success mindset. I'd love you to join me. You can always check up and sign up for the newsletter at thinkbig.coach. For all those who are following along with me in the launch party, are getting the early bird price before it hits the market at its regular price. So all the details I'll be sharing as we roll out this exciting course that I know that you'll love. So what is Success Mindset, the course? Success Mindset is my method of planning and goal setting big, huge dreams like writing books, producing albums, creating courses, building businesses. I have done some amazing off-road kind of things in blazing my own trail as a creative and a coach and an entrepreneur. I didn't realize when I got into the business of art 30 years ago that it would require me to put on my best CEO. And the most important lesson I've learned as a CEO, besides all the softwares and the systems, 
is in the goal planning and the goal setting. It's in having a vision and being able to use that vision and put it into reality through the monthly calendar, through 90 day vision, through your daily schedule. Taking that dream and implementing it into reality is both agonizing and exciting and as exhilarating as it can be. And I love the process, but I couldn't do it without a plan in place. And that requires a success mindset where you believe that you can actually make things happen. You have to go through fear and doubt, and you have to use all powers of focus to walk through a distracted world that is planted with traps, distract you, and trip you up at every turn. I have a 4x focus method that I use that is layers of focus that allows me to drop deep into my projects and follow through even when things happen that are unforeseen, that threaten to stop you in your tracks. Success Mindset, the course comes with a workbook that is part journal and part planner that you can use over and over to implement the one big plan that we're doing in the three month period of the course, but also to do it over and over again for big and small projects. So powerful for getting above the muck of our daily life. It's about creating excitement in your life and making it real and bringing it out to touch others. And it can be hard, but it is so rewarding and so fulfilling and it builds your dream. And you don't go to work every day building someone else's dream. You build yours. So what are you working on that's big? Where in your life do you need a success mindset? I'd love you to share that with me. Building dreams is my forte. Forte. I hope that whatever your dream is, that it requires you to think big.